trip tease dog Full clip and it will de-start This the part where my plans need heart Turning up the crime rate is back to back murder Changing my fate, I feel like Nat Turner Fuck, you got me up on the back burner, folk Trajectory's vertical What's next for me's personal So y'all can't be next to me Make them redefine what's a masterpiece Fucking up the piece, pour the gasoline Bounce they never seen What's a trampoline pressure building up Bursting at the seams, water time to read up I've been in a rush, going after dreams They say I should ease up uh, Boy, you might just go lose yourself to get universally love Tell me, who done woke the beast up? Tell me, how they gonna keep up? Jack Quill, nigga, uh. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Two Chaviana Show. You already know this is Radio 254, the home of Kenyan music and content. I am super excited, super gassed for today's show. I have so much lined up for you guys. And the first segment on this show is the interview segment and my guest is already here. I am super excited, super amped to be able to get to talk to him, find out about him, get to know a bit about his history and also get to know where he is at right now. I have a poet a songwriter, a rapper, a creative. His name is Jack Quill and he is in a the building right now and we are about to chop it up with him, get to know all about him, get to know about his music, get to know where he went to school, this and that and he is in the building with me. What's up? How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. What an introduction. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> Happy to be here. He is designing a legacy bar after bar, man. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so let's first start with the name. Yeah. Jack Quill. Yeah. So for me, I remember back in school when we had Quill. Yeah, the yeah, ink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I first wanted to ask, was that like your inspiration is, or is that your actual name? That was sort of, that was my inspiration because I was thinking about, um, like, I felt like every verse that I was writing was, you know, classic. Mm. And where my mind took me was the quill feathers, the quill pen. Yeah. So it was, ca- the quill, the ink was like sort of like a double entendre, an unintended one. But mm. what I actually, what inspired me was the quill feathers. Okay. everything I write is, you know, classic. So Jack Quill. Jack is a short form of my name, my real name, Jakinda. Jakinda. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Incredible. That's why I was like, wait, is this where he got the inspiration from? <laughs> and you, you were along <laughs> the right lines. Nice, nice. Yeah. So let us talk about school. Mm-hmm. High school. Mm-hmm. Where were you? I was in a school called Highway Secondary School mm-hmm. in South B. Nice. Yeah. What were you like in school? Were you like reserved? Oh, were you outgoing? Man. I'd like to sit here and lie and say I was calm. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. I was I was I was a troublemaker, man. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, I was a troublemaker, but I was also reserved when I needed to be. Mm-hmm. I feel like I was one of those people who I went with the flow a lot. Okay. And sometimes I went with the flow, sometimes I was causing the flow. Mm-hmm. Um I remember participating in a lot of the drama festivals, music festivals. All right. But to be honest, I just went to see the ladies. Cause <laughs> the ladies there. Yeah. But um, yeah, sports. I, I, I didn't do sports, mm-hmm. but I would be on the pitch almost every evening because my, my friends, were they were into sports. They played basketball, rugby, mm-hmm. all that. Um, yeah, high school. High school was really fun. Like sometimes I think about it and I'm like, how, how, did, how did I manage? How did we have all that fun with no money? Because we was broke. Right. But the fun the fun was just over the roof, man. Mm. It was a good time. Nice. Yeah. So I'm very curious as to when you started doing poems. Mm-hmm. Was that in high school or was it after? Um I feel like I started first of all, like I said, with the the high school clubs. Mm-hmm. 
but at that time I wouldn't say the interest was there fully. Mm-hmm. It was just like you know like I said those chicks and my friends were in these groups so I yeah. joined but like the real interest for me started way poetry in specific. Mm-hmm. Um it started a bit much later. Yeah. The first poem I remember ever writing seriously was some time in campus. Mm-hmm. I went through something. Mm-hmm. And I like wrote a poem about it but that's not something of I still appreciate it to date I still watch it even last night there's a page on YouTube called Poetry Me Please. Mm. You know it. I know it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I watch that a lot but you know writing itself I write more more my my writing is more of rap verses. Okay. Yeah, but infused with poetry i guess interesting yeah let's talk a bit about your family are you yeah. the only kid do no, you have siblings two sisters two younger sisters wow yeah. so like you're the first born yeah hey <laughs> first yeah. born manenos how is it <laughs> oh man it is it's it's great man i feel like mm. especially lately i'm just in a phase where i want to be i hope i am the best inspiration i can be to them mm. um that wasn't so much of my concern in yesterday years yeah but lately that's like something i'm keen on i okay. hope that how i'm moving and how i'm living can help them want to be better versions of themselves mm. yeah nice younger sisters love them to death one is one is doing nursing in mombasa oh nice the other one is pursuing some chef catering type of course mm-hmm. somewhere in south sea so dope yeah. that's incredible yeah. let's talk about now uni Mm-hmm. You now finish high school. Where yeah. do you go to uni? What do you study? I went to Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. Mm-hmm. I was studying mass communication actually. All right. Yeah. If I wasn't rapping, I'd probably be a co-host. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, um, I studied mass communication, uh, specialized in PR and print media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, did that for a while, for like four years. Mm-hmm got done with that moved on worked a few jobs here and there yeah whoa yeah. so in uni this is when you write like your first poet i yeah. mean your first poem yes. and you're like okay maybe i could be a poet like maybe this is my calling it, it actually started the that first poem was after like when was it like a year or two after i actually started writing verses okay what came first were the verses all right for for me what inspired me were like two albums take care and bon sinner mm. i remember take care was 2011 mm-hmm. bon sinner was 2013 yeah and if it wasn't for those two albums i i don't know i don't know what would have happened because you know we live in this version of the multiverse so this is what happened mm-hmm. but if those two albums never dropped i don't know if i would be rapping, rapping. like i would be writing my own like music you, maybe you. i would just have stagnated or remained at that I'm passionate about I like rap music mm-hmm. but those two albums for me crucial like wow that like that might even take care I've it's been on my mind for a while mm-hmm. I like taking my time with my tattoos but yeah. it's been on my mind for a while to just tattoo like take care on my right arm because mm. that album is super important to me okay I hear you so here you are you're writing yeah versus how is it dope 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 um what are you writing now or then 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 uh just a lot of like we were talking about lo-fi beats before yeah. we came on mm-hmm. so like that's that's one of the first apart from Drake and J Cole mm-hmm. that kind of hip hop is the kind of hip hop that got me so i was writing to a lot of uh, lo-fi beats i was mm-hmm. freestyling at parties yeah um it wasn't it wasn't like serious verses mm-hmm. not not like i feel like right now i it's 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 like both a, a blessing and a curse yeah because right now i've done it for so long mhm i can sometimes end up like overthinking but actually back then there was a lot of freestyling i remember yeah there was a bit of writing on write on my own in my hostel mm-hmm. and when i'm like chilling with uh, people i'll be freestyling at parties so it was like a mix of both i feel like i was just finding my footing and there was all this excitement out from this like was like a new thing it's like having a new toy as a kid mm, mm. so yeah wow yeah that's incredible yeah. so here you are you did you graduate oh yeah i did graduate you did yeah. so you graduated yeah. you're still writing still freestyling right yeah 
you get a couple of jobs here and there. I'm just very curious, what did you do in terms of jobs? Um the first the first one I was pretty much handling like just paperwork in the office. They okay. Just, <laughs> it was just, I got in also you that's the printer you were doing this this and this. Mm-hmm. I did that for like almost a month. Mhm. I got tired of it because they weren't even paying me. Oh. And because I got another one which was paying me. This was like an internship. Mhm. So I I moved there. There I was given what was I doing? I was doing pretty much the same thing like handling documents around the office. Mhm. Um writing press releases um there, there was like an in-house publication so i was tasked with a couple of us were doing it mm-hmm. but i had like my own quota of um articles that i had to submit per week for the for the publication okay I was doing some photography basically things revolving around corporate comms mm. yeah so did you quit you were like hey this is oh yeah yeah i, I did it for a while i did it for a while like almost three Three years, I think. Wow. Yeah, but then, yo, that that life, man. You were like, this nine to five is not for me. It is. It's, it's really not easy. <laughs> like I respect anyone, anyone who's thugging it out in the nine to five scene. Yeah. Like I literally remember days. It's not easy out here. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Sure. I would. I would rather pick this struggle than mm-hmm. that. Like there were days when I was, like deeply. I mean deeply questioning. Like what am I even doing here? Mm. It's like you're feeling. like you're just stagnating yeah. in this path that you know you don't see any future for yourself and mm. it's just sucking your soul i hear yeah, you that's the whole thing yeah yeah 9 to 5 is yeah. crazy so yeah. here you are you're like this is not for me yeah i have a bigger calling yeah. and that's music yeah so 2018 comes lately yeah lately yeah, yeah. yeah. you have seven songs and i'm very curious you before i appreciate that yeah <laughs> of course before lately i want to know what were you doing before lately um like i said i was just doing a lot of freestyling mm-hmm. a lot of rapping i remember i recorded like maybe two or three songs at a friend's studio in juja mm-hmm. um it was like if you listen to that first mixtape if you listen to it like someone who appreciates hip hop mm-hmm. you can tell that i hadn't just started yeah you can tell mm-hmm. that i had had done it for you a while you done it I for a while put a project out yeah so in between the the freestyling and the rapping started pretty much as soon as i feel like campus was the perfect time because it gave me this space away from home it's the mm-hmm. first time i'm away from home i have my own space mm-hmm. and it allowed me to explore this art further so it was something i was doing almost every day from like late 2013 mm-hmm. up until the point where I was dropping lately okay it's just that during that period uh a project was never on my mind mm. yeah nice yeah. so you decided i need to do a project this is me and then comes lately in 2018 and you talk about the journey is inwards master your motion yeah that's that's my um, second album Yeah, that's your second album. Yeah. So, I want to know from 2018 to now your album. How has this journey been? Who are you working with? The journey, the first part of the quest, the, the journey has been dope. Mm-hmm. Um I feel like the more I do it, the more I understand I understand my art form. I understand what I want to say, I understand how I want to execute it. Mm-hmm. Whether it's the people I'm working with, whether it's the kind of opportunities I'm seeking out. So the journey has been dope, up ups and downs, but it's been really dope. Mm-hmm. In terms of working with, I work with a lot of producers. On my first album, I worked with like four different producers. Mm-hmm. Um on the second album, I I was keen on cuz like I said, Jekyll is like one of my no biggest inspirations. Yeah. And one of the things that strikes me ab- has always made an impression on me about him is the fact that he produces for himself. Mm. So that's what motivated me to like work on my own yeah. my own beats for the second album. Yeah. Um because I I was just trying to emulate the legends, you know. Mm-hmm. Um for this third album, I've I I made the beats but I didn't mix the album. It was mm. mixed by an an engineer called Trevor. Mhm. Um there was one beat there from HR the Messenger. Um I've worked with also there was a a songstress mm-hmm. called Gabby. 
got mm-hmm. me India. Who blessed the a record called a record called the door. Mm. That that jam would not be what it is without her input. I just want to make that clear. Yeah. Um so yeah, I work basically it's just like whoever for me energy is like even more important than skill. Mm. Like if the energy is right, I feel like we'll be able to come up with something impactful. Mm. Cuz I don't think I can sit and work with someone whether it's a producer or a fellow artist mm-hmm. or whoever if the energy isn't right even the output will be it'll reflect yeah so yeah that's kind of how i approach it that's incredible yeah i want to know how would you describe your sound mhm i would say self aware okay sometimes even a bit too much maybe mm um honest Mhm. Um, I would also say energetic, fierce. Sometimes mm. it's very fierce like some of my verses I'm sure unless you just love hip hop like really love hip hop. Yeah. I don't know if you can sit through some of my verses. Sometimes <laughs> just, sometimes for me it's like it's like there's a light in my torso. Mhm. And I'm just trying to let it out. So sometimes it gets fierce, sometimes it gets chill, meditative but it's almost not almost it's always revolving around hip hop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. When it comes to producers, mm-hmm. who do you gravitate towards the most? What do you look for when you're looking for like a producer or who were you looking for before? Before um before I feel like I was just working with beats that resonate with me. Mhm. Of course that's different now. Yeah. Um I feel like the most important thing is if the beat just sits well with me. If I if I hear it and I feel like it's drawing out like some bars within me. Like mm-hmm. all I really need is like the first first or second bar. Mm-hmm. And once I have that I'm gone. I I don't like overproduced beats. Okay. Maybe unless it's something like a dramatic interlude or something, but mm-hmm. I feel like if you analyze even the best music It's really just like a synthesizer, drum pad and maybe that's it. Mhm. So, I'm not a big fan of overproduced beats. Mm-hmm. Um basically anything I vibe with. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Let's talk about making music in Kenya. Mm-hmm. And I want to know because for every artist yeah. or every creative, they always have just different sides to their story. Yeah. Now I want to know for you how has it been making music in the 254? Making making music in the 254 is is like <laughs> it's like being in the Sahara. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's um it's not for the faint of heart, man. It's like, not. It, it is not for the faint of heart. Mm-hmm. That um that glamorous image. Yeah. That you know you can have as a young artist coming into the game that mm-hmm. that gets chipped away quick mm-hmm. the more you do it but i feel like to make music in the 254 you really have to love it yeah you really have to love it i don't know maybe it's a global thing mm-hmm. i don't know like i've i've talked with some people who've been able who are currently doing music outside mm-hmm. the 254 mm-hmm. um and you know like they they say the same thing they're like wherever they are the industry it's brutal it's cutthroat it's competitive mm-hmm. but i don't know like i feel like if you can if you can tug it out in the 254 other places shouldn't be as hard because i say this because it's it's like a journey of um how do i put it you have to motivate your own self mm. like you can you can literally be putting out world class content mm-hmm. and not an eyelid will budge yeah <laughs> Yeah, so you have to be able to mentally look past that and see the the value in what you do. Mm-hmm. Without the without the approval. Like there's a bar in my latest album where I said um what did I say? Sans the applause. I mean, uh, it's 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 in dark chambers. Mm-hmm. I know that. I can't remember exactly what I said, but mm-hmm. it was something to the effect of I've been doing my my best without the applause. Mm. So you have to un unhook your mind from the need for the public applause mm-hmm. and really 
zone into your art and mm. just see where it goes. Incredible. Yeah. So your music is different. Yeah. Your songs are different. Your lyrics are very honest. Mm. They're deep. They're emotional. And I want to be able to know mm-hmm. for you making such music, how has it been with the listeners? Do they resonate with it? Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah. How has that been? Yeah, like my I wouldn't say my fan base is big, mm-hmm. but resonance is definitely there. Okay. It's definitely there. Like sometimes sometimes <laughs> Sometimes people send me DMs and I'm like, guys, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the Lord's work. I mean, maybe I am. Maybe you know, are. Who knows? I feel like sometimes what I what I put in these records, mm-hmm. it makes people feel like like there's literally people who maybe randomly you meet them out in the streets and the way they approach you and how they treat you, you mm-hmm. can tell there's a level of reverence they've given you. Mhm. That even yourself, you're like, okay, whoa, this wait. is wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just a guy making music, man. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's there. Like people resonate, people appreciate what I make. Um, and even lately, that the one of the dopest things that's happening to me lately is when I go when I go for shows, mm-hmm. I meet people who tell me I came specifically to see you. Like that that to me is that to me is that's crazy. That's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible for me. So that's huge. Yeah. So I'm very curious as an artist there are people who would like to experiment and probably try different genres and for you hip hop being like your main genre have you thought about venturing into like other genres as oh, for well sure. yeah for sure like even, even um currently I have like I'm really thinking where I want to like right now I'm like a few mixtapes in and three albums in mhm and I'm really thinking where I want to take the sound but I have a few records that are of course like I said I I stay within the zones of hip hop mm-hmm. but I also like the sounds of people like The Weeknd okay um people like Brent Fires mm. so yeah I'm I'm really thinking where I want to take the sound I don't I don't necessarily think like I just have to I'm a rapper that's it <laughs> done for true down. yeah exactly nah, 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 like, yeah Yeah, actually some of the music that I may drop going forward mm-hmm. might be more heavily infused by, you know, such people like I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've gotten to work with very few people on your music. Yeah. And I want to know is there a reason as to why this is or you just haven't found or wanted to feature other people? on your music. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not that I didn't want to feature. I'll be honest, like when um when I was like coming up I feel like okay, I, feel like I'm, I think I'm still coming up, so the journey's still going, but let mm-hmm. me say in earlier years. Mm-hmm. Um I was too out there, like I was the kind of guy who you know you, you go around the industry you go to events you'll meet people you'll get mm. contacts you'll get this you'll get that yeah so i really i wasn't i wasn't afraid to be that guy like yo i'm in your dm bam here's mm. my record let's do a feature oh yeah. one two you've gotten who's who so and so's whatsapp number bam here's my record what what you like mm. i was so out there i was so out there and it felt like it felt like i'm i'm giving too much of my spirit away mm. and it's like the more you do that the more I think people confuse that with you don't recognize your own self or something. Okay. So like it just go to a point I realized, you know what? Let me let me chill. Let me work on my own music. Mhm. And this is about to sound very egotistic. Okay. Full Say disclaimer. it. Full disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> let me chill. Let me work on my own music mm-hmm. and let these people, let them be the ones mm-hmm. to hear what I'm doing and be like I want to work with him. Yeah. Cuz the more I could I could send like a million DMs, I could reach out to you a hundred times, but why would that artist stop what they're doing? Mm. To look at what you're doing. Like everyone is busy trying to build their own castle, you know. Yeah. So, it's not that I'm not down to work with people. I'm super down. I just got tired of reaching out. Honestly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh who do you want to work with? Oh man. Let's start with the 254 then we can go international. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Um I don't know locally. 
I'd like to do something with Xenia. Okay. Yeah. Yo, that would be dope. I'd like to do something with who else? Who else? There's a guy. There's a guy called Swahili Papi. This guy. Uh, this guy's Swahili really Papi is this record yeah, have dope. happened a, a long time ago. So yeah. I don't know if you'll hear this. I'm still down to work with him. Mm, I think also you and Loki. You know Loki the Great. Lo- nah. I yeah. I think you guys Loki would make like dope music. Okay. Yeah, because it's the same yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah. Who else? Who else? I'd like to do something with Kali. Mm. Just because like. For a minute back then he was he inspired me a lot. Okay. Yeah, like that would be for the for the younger me. Mm. I'd like to do something with Kali. Dope, dope. Um Yeah, man. Uh it's it's a couple of people locally outside Kenya. I'd like to do something with Reese. Mm. Um Stogi T. Mm-hmm. SZA. <laughs> Yo, you just see what you just I did there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm. There's a producer called Mash Beats. Mm-hmm. I like his beats. He produces. Yeah. I don't know whether he currently produces for Reese or they had like a fallout. I don't mm. know. But his beats are so dope. There's a videographer called I've forgotten his name, but he shot. There's, there's an Aries song called We Both Know Better. Mm-hmm. He shot that video and he's done a couple of things for South African artists. I like his I like his direction. Dope. I'd like to work with him on maybe a video too. All right. Um, so Cody, like it's, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Incredible. Yeah. Well, I am sure you'll definitely get to work with them. Yeah. We're putting it out there to God the universe. Yeah. Let's talk about Darkroom Media. Yeah, yeah. You've gotten to work with them a lot. Yeah. So let's talk about when you first met because your visuals are like insane. Yeah. They're different. Credit to them. Yeah, yeah credit to them. Let's yeah. talk about when you first got to work with them and how it's been. Uh, It's been dope. What's, what's the first thing I worked on with Darkroom? Well, the first thing I worked on with Darkroom was Die Hard. The mm. Die Hard music video, which is, I think it's still like number one on my YouTube. Yeah. It um, is people. People love that song for some reason. It's it. It baffles me. Like it's it's a great song. I'm not saying it's a bad song. It's <laughs> yeah. Just like sometimes I'm like, wow. Like you guys really like this song. I have mm. people who know me by just that song. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's the first uh, visual I worked on with Darkroom. Mm-hmm. Then we did. I think we did a live session for my album. Mm-hmm. We did to the bank. We did new decade, same dreams. We did. We did a couple of videos. Yeah, they, they're they're very dope, man. Shout out to them. Yeah, um, we haven't been in touch in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess life gets in the way sometimes, but they they're really dope guys, man. And True. They, they were very crucial to that phase of my journey. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. Because I saw them work on a couple of your visuals, and I was yeah. like, these guys are dope. Oh, like, man, like I really wish, I I wish like they they keep at it wherever they yeah. are. I hope they pick it back. Like I I I look at them, and I see like growth to like lyrical lemonade levels if mm. they keep at it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Yeah. Let's talk about your lyrics and how you become vulnerable. Mm. There's a song called A While and you're like guarded my heart and oh, yeah. evaded depression because yeah. some of the moments in my life were yeah. or have been really low. Can write from the people that are called my people. People that aren't calling close. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I want to know for you who mm-hmm. is being vulnerable, how how is it? Like, you know, you're putting yourself out there. You're opening up. You're telling people, hey, look, I was depressed yeah. or I've been going through this. I want to know because, you know, we listen to the music yeah. and we take it in. But then for you as an artist, yeah. you are actually pouring and yeah. g- putting yourself out there yeah someone I, w- I was watching i can't remember which artist it was but i liked how they put it they they were like it, it's like a rinsing mm-hmm. like you rinse yourself of these energies yeah um it's sometimes it's not easy man mm-hmm. but i would say it's like it's almost like a need because mm-hmm. some of these emotions and thoughts they can either you know, one live inside you and eat you up, mm-hmm. or you can put them out, and maybe that might not be the solution to mm-hmm. whatever you're going through. Mm-hmm. 
but in my experience it's always a first step mm. to like finding finding either a solution or a space in which you can coexist and better deal with whatever you're going through mm-hmm. or you have been through so it's not always easy for sure but for me it's almost like a necessity yeah mm. yeah i want to know yeah what makes a good song what to good you song to me yeah emotion mm emotion makes a good song mm-hmm. um i feel like and it's not even just with like soft records we're not just talking about uh clio soul or siza or like mm-hmm. even if you you could be rapping as hard as you possibly ever have yeah but if it's not genuine if you're not like you mean what you're saying and people can feel what you're saying mm-hmm. you know if it, if it's emotionless it's almost lifeless people can't feel it yeah and i feel like if you give it the right emotion people may not even understand what you're saying mm-hmm. but they'll feel it yeah you can't you can't fake a feeling they'll mm. feel it so i think that's what makes a good song emotion that's what's up yeah 2020 new decade same dreams yeah. this was your first album right yeah, album number 1 yo this is huge like yeah. you know people usually don't really look into albums like that but i feel like if you've done an album you should be very <laughs> proud of yourself like even <laughs> if it's just one <laughs> yeah, yeah that's facts that's facts yeah, yeah and you had a couple of people who yeah. were able to help you out yeah So I don't know if this is how you pronounce his name. Yeah. These niggas were Michael. Niggas. Me Mi- niggas. Yeah, I was like is it niggas or niggas? Yeah. <laughs> Preach uh then you have Elm Buyu, yeah. Ian Five Star, Jaff- yeah, Ian Jaffar, Five Star, yeah, Jafar, sorry, Ian. Um then these Jafar Cabs. Mm-hmm. How was that and who are these people and what did they do for this album to come to fruition? Um they made the beats for me. Okay. Um I think Five Star made the most beats on that album. All right. Five or six. Um Jafar made like two. Mhm. And Buyu made one. Um then both of them Negus Negus or Michael is El Buyu and OG Preach the brothers. So okay. when they produce together that's their name. Mm. They no longer use their individual names. Okay, okay, makes sense. Yeah. That's incredible yeah. because I listened to a couple of songs and I was like, "Yo, this is so dope." Yeah. Which was your favorite if I might ask? Um damn Old I'd have to I'd have to go back. It's okay. not it's not one album that I've really taken the time to. Yeah, I can tell you. Yeah, like done a deep dive. yeah, like I was trying to like listen to everything and also try to like just make sure that I get everything as a whole. Yeah. But what really struck me was the illustration. The mm. cover art was dope. Like I feel like, I feel like that cover art was like half the battle won. Like <laughs> yeah. That, that girl gave me such a dope cover. Yo, art. shout out to Tara Light. Tara Light, yeah, yeah. Yo. She 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 gave me I just I, I think I just DM'd her. I remember DMing her explained to her what I wanted. Mhm. And yeah, I think she she just she understood the assignment. So. Yeah, she really really did. Yeah. And I want you to just kindly talk to us or take us through this your first album. Mm-hmm. You said new decade same dreams. So yeah. this the dreams are still the same. Yeah. So it's, it's a new decade of course. Yeah. A lot of a lot has happened, a lot has changed. Yeah. And I want to be able to understand from you what you were trying to put across with this album. What I was trying to put across was the resolve that I had given the fact that it was the turn of the decade. Mm. and i feel like it was i feel like things like you know like turn of the decade or even just new years like even we're approaching a new year right now yeah that's usually a good time to like retreat to your own inner inner world and you know really focus and zone in on what you want to achieve you know mm mm-hmm. so new decade same dreams was basically me saying hey it's 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 this whole new decade we've made it past a whole decade mm-hmm. that in itself is like okay an achievement yeah and for like the last half of the previous decade 2014 or so up mm-hmm. until 2020 yeah i was you know i was doing my thing i was growing i was you know doing the freestyles a few mixtapes here and there and so ndsd is me saying okay now it's a new decade 
the dreams are still the same mm. make it with the rap music to take it to the world so it's a new decade but i still have the same dreams that was basically it that's what's up yeah yeah It's an incredible album. I'll definitely need to go have a listen, like a second listen to it. Uh, I'm so happy that people are still listening to that. Like yeah. I usually feel like I usually feel like um when my music gets to the levels I imagine it to get to like mm. you know, people are going to have so much to catch up on. Yeah, It's exactly. Like <laughs> that that gives me joy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. Fade away. Yeah. That was dope. Thank you. Nene K, City Boy, EST. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Yo, yeah. 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 How was that? That was dope, man. Shout out to Nene K. That guy, he literally, he did that for me. Like, he just liked the song. Mm. And he was like, Yo, you know what? Come to my studio. I'll shoot something for you. He shot it for me. Had it edited. Sent it to me. I uploaded it. Yeah, Yo. Yes. And that's how it's supposed to be yeah, done, man. you know? Shout out to shout out to Nene K. Cuz even at like my recent show so. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I want to talk about AD double AT records. AD yeah. or is it should I say Adat? Yeah, exactly. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Adat records. Yeah. And I want to know for you you decided, okay, fuck the other records. Like mm-hmm. I'm just going to do everything myself. I want to <laughs> produce. <laughs> Nah. I'm gonna release everything. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. nah, okay. So yeah. tell us about this Adat Records. Yeah. Um. So first of all, it stands for a day at a time. Ah. That's, that's what it stands for. Okay, a day at okay, a time okay, records. okay. And for me, it came at a point where I felt like my. I was previously I was in a record called Major Beat a Lot. Mm-hmm. But um, it just got to a point where I felt like I was better off on my own. Okay. Um, and also apart from that I was I was going through a lot of things at that time and a dot actually came from it's a cliche it's something people say every every time take it a day at a time it's mm. a cliche but it came from a conversation I was having with my uncle and we were just talking about life and and, and all that and he just happened to mention it, mention it in a conversation mm-hmm. um and I I just I thought that's exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm I'll call my label a dot a day at a time mm mm-hmm. Um and for me it's like it's more of a mantra than even a label it's something I I try as much as I can to live by Mhm um I feel like you can it's easy to get your mind caught up in either the past wallowing regretting wishing things were different mm. or foreboding for the future like yeah. that's that's actually what causes a lot of people anxiety you mm. either stuck in the past or you're thinking too much about the future and i feel like all you can really do is try and make sure that today goes well because mm. it's all you have so just taking it a day at a time a dot records and my vision for it is first of all i, I don't plan to be just do everything on my own okay. I actually I actually do things with other people at times it's just mm-hmm. that they're not like permanent members of it mm. um my long term vision for it is hopefully after i've gotten to where i want to get to or i'm mean, i'm at a place where i'm comfortable enough i would like to i don't see myself engaging too many artists but i would mm. like to find someone who's like like that kid that i was in campus yeah i'd like to go back find that 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 guy or that chick and do for them what like like a Lil Wayne did for like Nicki and Tiger mm. or Drake like mm. even if at the end of the day I'll just have dealt with one or two artists I really see myself taking someone who I believe in mm-hmm. and doing for them what I spent years wishing was done for me yeah so that's like my long term goal with it that's what's up yeah and my element was the first single under yeah under it right yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what's up yeah. <laughs> how was it It was it was dope. It was a good feeling. It was like now when I listen to it I can pick apart like a million different mistakes mm. that people would never hear. Yeah. <laughs> only now, you. <laughs> yeah, like uh, only I can hear them like production wise. I like the writing but specifically production wise. Mm-hmm. Um but it was important for me because I feel like it's it's the first single that it it made me believe in myself as a producer yeah yeah cuz i remember the first time i was i was working with this producer called kashule mhm uh he was he was uh, in jerusalem mhm so i remember he would be in his studio 
and he he was using FL Studio I think I think he had Cubase or Ableton mm-hmm. he had like two or three different doors and those things it it's it seemed like rocket science to me so f- to go from that to making making in my element mm. it was like okay now I'm in the game now I feel like this is something I can do so that's why that's that record is important to me it helped me believe in myself mm. as a producer that's what's up so yeah. th- was this like your first produced song yeah wow yeah that's huge yeah that's incredible how long did it take you to learn uh it's kind of been a slow journey okay to take it back even further the first record that i now mixed this one i produced and you mixed you produced them, yeah but the record the first record i mixed i think it's only on soundcloud mm-hmm. it's called the jam mm. so from that point on i got my studio at that time i was still working so i had i had a bit of loose change i was able to buy some equipment for my studio mm. i bought it over the course of when was it 2018 wow so 2019 is january that's the a jam is the first record i mixed Mm-hmm. and from there it's just been um bits and pieces you find this nice tutorial on youtube you find this producer on instagram you learn a few things you go here learn a few things mm-hmm. you're in a session with someone you see them do something you learn a few things yeah um yeah so it's just been bits and pieces and picking up useful information from different places mm. yeah that's what's up i'm i'm actually even still learning yeah still, yeah yeah that's the thing like i'm sure with with anything that we are doing we we're still learning like yeah. learning never stops it never stops but that's incredible that you picked it up and you were like hey i'm actually going to do this so yeah, it's, it's even um it's even made my my journey easy easier when i when i hear artists talking about paying for studio time mm. and all that like, Yo, yo you could yo, just do it yourself you could do it yourself if <laughs> yeah. you wanted to yeah. you know it's actually that's something i if if anyone is listening and you like on that point where you're starting mm. i would highly recommend learn production yeah or learn an instrument mm. like just learn something about your craft and just take it slowly by slowly mm-hmm. you'll wake up one day a year two years from now and you'll be like wow how did i even get here true so yeah it's really helped me actually that's what's up yeah let's talk about the uncut hip hop awards cipher yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you remind me things I even forgot about. You forgot. Yeah. yeah. We like to go through like a nice CTA here, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about this cipher. How was it for you? Why did you decide, "Hey, you know, like this is actually something that I want to be able to be a part of?" Mm, yeah. Um Miss Miss Ruby put me on to that. For real? Yeah. Wow. Um she's the one who put me on to that. Mm-hmm. Um of course me being who i am and me trying to you know prove myself and stand on all these other up and coming rappers yeah competitors <laughs> <laughs> i had to hop on that so mm-hmm. shout out to miss ruby shout out to uncut yeah that that was that was a moment for me and it opened a few doors for me mm-hmm. um that's actually how i met steph capella oh like yeah he, that verse is the verse that got his attention oh that's what's yeah, up so you guys had a song called gone yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah we've we've actually been working with him a bit so mm-hmm. that's but that that uh, uncut freestyle was the entry point into our working relationship that's dope yeah. i want to know when your first performance mm-hmm. was on stage man would you believe i don't even remember for real i swear i don't because i was doing um there was this thing at the alchemist mm-hmm. it was i think it ran for like a year mm-hmm. um it was called open mic at the alchemist mm. and it was hosted by this lady called sadia abrahams yeah so like i i don't remember the exact first mm-hmm. oh wait 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 i actually do yeah i actually do tell us uh, the very first time i was on stage how did i forget that was in kitengela i've mm-hmm. remembered that mm-hmm. was at that time i was in i think there's even a video on youtube yeah um I was in campus uh there was a show that had come up in campus I was in this group called Illist uh okay the movement but it wasn't mm-hmm. really movement it was M expletive mm-hmm. star 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 yeah. alive so we had gotten this show and it was in Kitengela so we went there performed it was at a club called 411 mm-hmm. but after that I didn't really perform for a minute so 
after that is when the open mics came at the alchemist mm-hmm. and the open mics were really important to me because i feel like that's where i kind of learned to manage my stage fright i would say because mm-hmm. i had to be on stage every was it tuesdays or wednesdays i can't remember either but every tuesday every week for almost like a year i mm-hmm. had to be on stage i made it my priority to be on stage um and that's really where i feel like i got i built my live performance bones mm-hmm. yeah that's what's up yeah how was it performing the first time nervous of course I, yeah i think it was it was like i felt like the world might be ending i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it felt like everything had stopped and this here was this is the only reality now mm-hmm. and yeah man i i miss i miss that feeling these days i'm too arrogant i'm just jumping in the stage and grabbing the mic and for doing, real like, <laughs> I, do, i don't know where my stage right went honestly so <laughs> the most i get is a bit of butterflies okay but i'm never like scared of the stage i would say even i even anticipate it like mm. like i'm even right now i feel like i think i tweeted it some some weeks ago i was like i'd like my dream right now I feel like I have enough workout. I just I feel like I want to be on stage for like the next 2 3 years straight. Mm. Like when I see someone like um maybe say Little Sims or you know Kendrick and mm. they're booked until next year but one. Yeah. That's like that's like a dream for me. That's what I'm craving right now. I want to be on stage Dope. so much until like I can't take it anymore. Yeah. yeah. Till you get tired. Till I get tired of it. Fanisi music. He said This was your best live show of your no artistic doubt. journey. And yeah. I meant that, yeah. Why? Yeah, I wish you were there. Yeah. Uh, it was a dope show. How was it? Tell us. Um first of all, f- shout out to Fanisi. They just um yo, <laughs> out here these promoters can get shady, man. Like, mm. Dealing with promoters sometimes is crazy, but Fanisi handled it so professionally. Yeah. Every um single thing that we asked for as the performers w- for performers was catered to. Mhm. Um the venue was just was just right. Yeah. The night was like that night was magical. Like anyone who was there mm. anyone who was there will re- that show people will be coming up to me years after to remind me. Yeah. Yo, I saw you first at Fanisi like that show was magical. I don't e- I can't I can't put it into words but the night was just right. Mm-hmm. It went exactly how I hoped it would go. Yeah. And even better. So yeah, it was what the best the best live performance I've had so far. Nice. Yeah. I don't and, know if and shout out to Ecstatic as well yeah. for having me on her set. Yeah, yeah. It was actually her show. I was just the supporting act. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Shout out to you Ecstatic. Yeah. I want to be able to I don't know talk about it, but that's totally up to you. The African Throne World Tour. Yeah. You were disappointed. Yeah. Um, you know, you came out with a statement. Yeah. And I don't know if you want to be able to talk about it, but we want to know like what happened. Um Yeah, I I came up with a statement because I felt like it was necessary to like I told you earlier, I'm I'm these, these days I'm going to shows and I'm meeting people who you know i specifically came to see you and mm. that night in particular i met so many people i was like yo jehovah what is this mm. <laughs> like are you just blessing me right in front of my eyes i met so many people yeah who were there specifically to see me and shout out to them if if they're listening like mm. if you came on that day specifically to see me shout out to you yeah and so when when um i wasn't able to go on stage i just the next day i just felt like i owed it to them i didn't even do it to like malign the promoters mm. that's why i didn't even include their names or mm. tag them tag yeah um that was really just for everyone who had come out to see me and was wondering what happened mm. i just wanted them to know that that was in that was in my fault like i was i was there i think they saw me on on site i was there mm-hmm. i was ready but the the organizing how they were handling it it was to put it to put it briefly it was like y'all are second tier artists We, mm, you're not really like the top. show isn't for you you know mm. so it was like I, i mean i get it it was nasty see and casper's show yeah i totally get that yeah but the treatment was and it didn't even start on that day mm, like even before throughout that whole week there was, there's just a couple of things that happened mm-hmm. and what um what makes me 
comfortable to even say that is because it wasn't happening just to me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was every every everyone who was well, not everyone, but a few, a few of us who were contracted by these guys. Mm-hmm. It was happening to all of us and at some point even us we were like, "Yo, do we really want to do this show?" Yeah. But we I pulled up there on that day. I was actually there much earlier, like around 3 4 p.m. Mhm. Um they told the sound check would be at that time. It wasn't at that time. Actually didn't happen. Mhm. Went back home, did a few things, came back later. The organizing was just like by around I don't know by around 11 p.m. it was almost clear to me that I wouldn't be on stage. So mm. yeah, I just at that point I just chose to to stay and enjoy the show because I also came to see the show. Yeah. So you know everyone killed it who who performed everyone killed it. Yeah. Nasty killed it, Casper killed it. Um I went home. The next day I woke up. Mhm. And as soon as I put the statement out, honestly I was good. And some people, you know people were people were like at least you got paid and I was like you guys don't know why if you if you think if you think I left there happy just because I got, got paid, paid like yeah. you, you really don't understand why I do what I do but mm. I I get it I get why you would say that yeah but yeah I I I I take it as a lesson and it's definitely impacted how I'll be engaging with event organizers going forward mm-hmm. yeah okay 21st April is your birthday Yeah. Yo, yeah. so you celebrated it uh, by releasing a single Loose Ends. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, damn, damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know why. Like it's so oh, interesting. Man. You're like, "Hey, I will gift you guys." I, you I know? don't know, man. It was like, "What else can I do? It's my it's my bir- First of all, like like I never grew up celebrating birthdays. Mm. Yeah, maybe that sounds weird or something. Yeah. For religious purposes. Okay. Like we didn't celebrate birthdays. So yeah. Even to date, like birthdays are just like have you have you seen like people who don't know what to do with your hand, their hands in pictures? Mm. That's me on birthdays. <laughs> like, what do I do with this? Like what day? do I do? Yeah, so <laughs> it was just like, you know what? I have this song I really like. That's actually one of my favorite songs. Mm. That's, I I really like that. So like it's one of those songs I write and I Like I even asked myself how did I mix that because it sounds so good and yeah. I'm pretty sure I know more now than I knew then. Then um yeah so it was just like it's my birthday. Yeah. Let me drop a song for these uh, my fans and that's how I celebrated yeah there wasn't much to it. That's what's up. Yeah. Then came sophomore album mm-hmm. Lost in Motion mm-hmm. 10 songs. Mm-hmm. Is this your second album? Yeah, What like my second album. Second yeah. yeah. How now Because I wouldn't say you're like a pro, but like now you you know what you want to sound like. You know what your music is supposed to be yeah. like. I want to know what the journey was like making soft, the sophomore album Lost in Motion. That album was um, Lost in Motion was super important for me. Like I feel like at that point th- there was there was a point in um, I want to say from like twenty. 17 mm-hmm. so up until maybe late 2019 where but the thing <laughs> things got a bit things got a bit lit i mm. would say like i was i was a young artist coming up mm-hmm. i had you know you have this whole nonsensical idea of what it is to be an artist too mm. much partying too much mm-hmm. this and that yeah and i think at some point i was genuinely running a trap house like For real? Yeah, at some point <laughs> things were just a bit too lit. And yeah. Lost in motion was just me trying to to like master my emotions and mm. it was me coming into the realization that this is there's a music and to make this music, to make the best music I can possibly make and also the only way I can say thank you to you know to God and the universe for blessing me with the talents I have is to just calm myself down and focus on what I'm doing just get lost in my emotions whether that's I remember during that phase I was making almost a beat or two a day mm. for like more than six months wow like I have a whole folder of beats that mm-hmm. I never used mm-hmm. but that helped me because one it grew me as a producer yeah and also there's something that comes with whatever your craft is whether you're a chef whether you're a 
even even the nine to five grind, whether you 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 crochet sweaters, I don't know whatever your craft is, mm. there's something that comes with you spending as much time as you can with it and staying passionate about it. Once the excitement is over, once you're feeling like you're almost getting jaded, but mm. you say no, I won't get jaded. I'll go even deeper. I'll double down. Yeah. So on Lost in Motion, that was me doubling down. And saying, you know what? If you if you if you thought um, I was at my best on New Decade, Same Dreams, or whatever, mm-hmm. not yet. Here's this. Here's Lost in Motion. Mm-hmm. So it was basically me trying to master my emotions. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. Let's talk about Boom Buzz Global. Yeah. You talked to Jinx, yeah. and I want to know how that was for you. Must have been quite big. That was big because I was like, yo. I think it's one of the might be one of the first not one of it was the first promotional interview I did for a project. Wow. Yeah, previously I was just dropping mm. and, you know hoping for the best but boom play. I think I I got in touch with them or the, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But they were kind enough to call me to their offices. Um we did that interview with Jinx. Yeah. I think they playlisted a few songs from Lost in Motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really dope. Dope. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, shout out to Jinx. Shout out to Jinx. Yeah. Let's talk about Utopia. Yeah. Which I honestly haven't had time to listen to. But tell us about this. Tell us about Utopia. So First of all, contrary to what anyone thinks, it's it's absolutely not related to the Travis Scott album. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to put that out there. Yeah. I had the title way before I even saw any of mm. uh, Travis's marketing but mm-hmm. anyway that's just synchronicity um searching for utopia utopia for me is like what I'm where I'm trying to get to okay you know I'm I'm trying to get to a point where I'm not just comfortable mm-hmm. you know there's being com- you're comfortable with the yeah. music you're you're making rent you're eating all that mm-hmm. i'm trying to get w- to a point where it's just pure opulence you know like the flyest of whips the best of clothes you know trying to take over the globe yeah <laughs> like I'm really trying to take over the globe yeah. like multiple addresses in different parts of the city mm-hmm. like i'm really trying to get to a point where mm-hmm. my reality is almost utopic mm-hmm. it's like is this even real so searching for utopia i'm still searching for that utopia okay basically yeah there's a song here called the mind of a young artist yeah what is in the mind of a young artist specifically hey. you <laughs> <laughs> cuz if we say artist we're being very general yeah but i want to know what's it like um the mind of a young artist uh will i make it or not will they give me a spot am i really going uh It's just like those it's me um, trying to embody the those moments that as a young artist on the come up whatever mm-hmm. feels not even just as an, a singer or rapper or whatever mm-hmm. um there's moments where especially if you're not you know some some people do this as maybe like a hobby and that's cool I'm not like knocking them that's cool mm-hmm. but if you're really trying to do it at the level where I'm trying to do it like I'm trying to get to a point where you know like I said you're booked for two years straight yeah. you'll have tours all over mm-hmm. when you're trying to get there and you're you you're putting out your best over and over and over again mm-hmm. and sometimes it feels like nothing is giving um the questions that I'm putting in that hook on some some days or some nights as a young artist you'll have those questions mm-hmm. will i make it or not will they will they give me a spot am i really going to pop you know so that was basically me speaking to myself mm-hmm. for those times when i have th- those are questions questions i've asked myself mm-hmm. real and i feel like anyone who's on the same path as i am at some point at some point you've asked yourself those questions not every day if you if you're asking yourself those questions every day you, you, <laughs> need, you need to like sit down and take control of your mind that shouldn't be something you think about every day every day on yeah. most days i'm i'm too lost in my in my creativity and just enjoying the process but once in a while you get to a point where those questions pop up so 
Mm. That's what the song is about. Okay. Let's talk about your parents. Do they support yeah. you? Uh, my mom does. Okay. <laughs> my mom does. My mom supports me to mm -hmm. like to death. Like she's even been to a few shows. Oh yeah. Yeah. How's mom. that been? Dope, dope, dope. It's a good feeling, man. It's mm. a good feeling. She sometimes she she worries about me. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I I think I don't know who feeds her to uh, some inf bad information. Bad about information. The music. Well, it's not bad. It's 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 factual sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, like even as as recently as last night, she was asking me. Um, artist and it was i don't know there's a nigerian artist called mo bad mm. who i don't know what happened but mm -hmm. they're saying like he's deceased mm. first of all mm -hmm. but they're saying like his label was involved and everything mm. so sometimes she worries about me in the industry i'm in and yeah. she, she she checks up on me to just know that i'm on the right space even just mentally mentally and yeah she really supports me for real that's important My dad not so much mm -hmm. um if anything, it's it's drawn us a bit further apart, mm -hmm. and that doesn't help because even the music aside, we still had other issues. Mm. Um, but now this is, you know, my dad is the kind of okay, like okay for for con like back in the day, I remember I had a, but there, th this doesn't mean that I was too spoiled as a child, but I had a PS2, right? Okay. So I remember when he got me that mm -hmm. there was an option to either get Grand Theft Auto 3 mm -hmm. or some some game about flying airplanes. Mm -hmm. And you know me being me I just wanted to shoot people in the streets and steal some <laughs> cars. So I picked Grand Theft and he was so disappointed <laughs> but he still bought it for me anyway. But yeah. that's the kind of person he is. I think mm. in his mind he envisioned me being I don't know, like a, a doctor, a doctor. Or a pilot or something. Mm. So to go from that to what I'm doing now, I think the disconnect is too great for him. Mm. And right now, I think I think the only thing that would level things out is if I made it beyond even anyone's wildest imaginations. Mm. So I hear you. It's drawn us a bit further apart, but I know that he's there if if I ever need him. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like he's not there for me. Mm. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. That is important. So you came out a month ago with this dope ass visual with one uh, of your songs. Yeah. And it's taken off. Yeah. People are really liking it. I can yeah. see the comments. Yeah. Guys are like song is taking me in my zone. Yeah. <laughs> your sound is super refreshing. Yeah. Tapping into the moment is a life skill. Yeah. And everybody's talking about tapping into the moment. Yeah. And that's what the song is about. Mm -hmm. So I want to know how, who did the visuals? Yeah. Let's talk a bit about this and um, how it must be for, you know, you to get recognition. Like, guys are like, wow, this is actually so yeah. dope. Yeah. Um, the visual was was done by a professional mm -hmm. called Hardy, Hardy Wambiakale. Okay. And he he's one of the most passionate uh, videographers I've worked with mm -hmm. to date. Mm -hmm. And... I like working with him because he actually understands my music. Mm. Like even the the videographers I've worked with before, they all understand my music for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. But Hardy's the he's the kind of guy who will be chilling and he'll just quote like a line from one of my records from like mm. two years ago, and I'm like, yo, you really listened. So yeah, he's a cool guy. He's the one who shot it and edited it. Well, um, as for the reception, I'm I'm happy, man. I just hope that people are you know listening to it and. Mm. trying to at least tap into the moment sometimes that's all you need sometimes when when you feel like your mind is racing and all that all you mm. need is like a deep breath and just recognize the now true that's what the hook is about just tapping into the moment it's a it's a life skill and it's never it's not taught in fact in fact in the era we are in they're even taking you further away from the moment they want mm. you to go into a headset and buy artificial land in the metal or whatever yeah so yeah yeah it's crazy the, the moment is eluding us more and more mm. like, but it, it's crucial sometimes to just put everything to silence and just recognize the moment so okay yeah so i'm very curious this whole time i haven't heard you speak or mention a manager mm -hmm. you've been doing this solo mm -hmm. how has that been for you oh it hasn't been I wouldn't say it's been bad. Mm -hmm. I definitely... Okay, the thing is, I know people who are being managed. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't know. I just see we're like on the same level either way. Mm-hmm. So it's not like I'm opposed to having a manager. Okay. But it would have to be it would have to be something that brings value to the process. Mm-hmm. You know, not just bureaucratic like oh yeah Jacqueline as a manager that da da da. Mm. It would have to be someone who I know that if I'm if I'm working with this guy, this is this is someone who they'll get me radio placements, they'll mm. get me shows here and there. And yeah. So far I haven't really found someone of the sort, but it's not something I would be opposed to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm very curious as to what you're doing right now. Right now. Are you making music? Are you working on another album? <laughs> Are you doing a couple of features here and there? Are you performing? What's keeping you busy right now? Uh I just did a feature last week. Mm-hmm. Um I won't say with whom. I'll, I'll leave that to them mm-hmm. whenever they drop it. Whenever they drop it um I'm trying to work on a few visuals. Mm-hmm. Um I'm always working on music. That's like that's like in my schedule. Mm-hmm. That's like I dedicate like a few hours to it every day. Whether I'll just write a verse or make a beat, mm-hmm. that's that's something that's always ongoing. Mm-hmm. But project-wise, nah, I don't I don't really feel like my mind is on a project right now. I okay. just wanna. I spent almost two years working on searching for Utopia. Mm-hmm. Like the first record, Double or Nothing, is a record from January 2021. So it's been a long time coming for for this album, mm-hmm. and. I just want to let it sink and I don't want to just dive right back into the studio yeah. and then be that guy who makes the same music over and over and over again. Mm, I hear you. So I would say I'm in like an observatory mode. I'm in I'm in a do not disturb mode. I'm just observing my life and mm-hmm. a lot is happening in my life and the lives of people around me. So yeah, I'm just taking it all in. Okay. Yeah. Apart from music, what else do you like to do? Oh man, like hobby wise or Yeah. Like when I walked in you were playing a game on your phone. <laughs> <Is> so <laughs> are you a gamer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like games can actually take too much of my time. Man. Yeah. <laughs> like playing um Call of Duty, mm. the mobile version and the PlayStation version. Mm-hmm. I haven't played the PC version yet. Mm-hmm. Um also like there's this little silly game pool. It's mm-hmm. like that game is like it's even better than than playing actual pool. Like <laughs> it's, it's too addictive. Yeah. Um movies mm-hmm. like, movies can literally i probably would have delivered my album earlier if i wasn't watching too many movies oh yeah yeah <laughs> like i like movies a lot play me on the movies i i tried bowling like one month ago i i I'd never i'd always said i would try it mm-hmm. um tried it one month ago i liked it yeah, yeah. like i do I do yoga sometimes okay yeah. that's nice yeah would you see yourself doing like what's the future of your music where do you want to take it um i want to take it someone who's really building the template for where i want to take it is nasty mm. nasty see like mm. i feel like he's really pushing those international boundaries for his music yeah um he already took it south africa wide africa wide mm-hmm. i feel like his focus is on the us market i think and also i think he's done some things in japan mm mm-hmm. mhm my focus is to be um a globally active artist i want to be i want to touch down in st petersburg russia and i know i have like an event promoter there and mm-hmm. two videographers there i want to go to austria and i know hey, there's this singer that we linked up 2 years ago there um i want to go like i want to i want to have networks all over the world musically mm-hmm. and not just networks but lucrative ne- networks yeah whether it's fan base wise and being able to push merch to them wherever they are in the world mhm doing shows all over that's really my that's my vision okay yeah what advice would you give somebody who looks up to you and wants to get into the same industry believe in yourself mhm believe in yourself so hard that it's it's almost delusional mhm um don't don't spend too much time <coughs> sorry don't spend too much time focusing on things that don't matter mm. um how do i put it like for example say say you're trying to learn mixing and mastering right mm-hmm. 
don't spend the whole day on YouTube watching tutorials and filling your mind with all this content mm-hmm. and actually never opening your computer and mixing and mastering something. Yeah. Like start with what you have, start with what you know, make those trash mixes, write those I'm not saying your verses are whack, but write those <laughs> whack verses. Yeah. And just get all that out of the way and most importantly just spend as much time as you can with your art. Mm-hmm. Believe in yourself and just keep your head in the in the right space you know like um like i feel like i said somewhere between a few years ago it was like it was too wild for me i feel like i was too caught up in that young artist perspective you think it's it's not a it's not a party 24/7 mm, no. true. It, it may seem like that you may watch you may watch future sipping lean on every video you think future is tripped future, future is probably like a guy with a gym subscription and a <laughs> chef a private True. chef in the crib yeah. and he's very you know don't don't believe in these images too much realize mm. that when people say the music business the business is around the music mm. there's no music without the musician so essentially you are the business True. and the same way if someone can open their business premise in the morning and they sweep it and they make sure everything is nice and clean mm. clean up yourself you know whether eat right work out just try and be in the best be be at your best whatever your best is be at your best and do your best mm-hmm. and leave everything else to the universe that's what's up yeah how do you make sure that you are keeping on top you're doing your best you're you're you know making sure that you're sharpening your skills like mm-hmm. what do you do to make sure that you are staying on top um uh for me like fitness is i'm very big on fitness mm. i feel like there's there's a mental resilience and strength that comes with maintaining a proper fitness regimen mm. so this doesn't mean you have to like work out 5 hours a day. If you if you work out 15 minutes a day and you break a sweat and you feel like you've worked out, that's your regimen. True. Do that multiple times a week. Um I try I try and eat right. Mhm. Um I also try and watch the energies that I let into my my space whether it's physically or mentally. Mhm. I just try and be aware of what kind of energies am I letting into my space. Mhm. Um like I said I do I haven't done yoga in a minute cuz I used to go to this place that they offered free yoga mm-hmm. then they they closed up I think the donations were they were donation based class so at the end oh, of the class okay. you receive donations mm-hmm. but I think that was in that wasn't enough to keep them running so they closed and after they closed is when I realized damn yoga is actually quite expensive in this city where it is so, <laughs> so Ooh, like if you're that. trying to get fit it's Yo, expensive it like gym expensive. yoga yeah, it's actually <laughs> it's, it's a pretty penny yeah but but you can also just do fitness at home like that mm-hmm. shouldn't stop you so so basically fitness eating well and mm-hmm. just staying cautious of my energies and yeah. taking it a day at a time That's what's up. Yeah. So remember how before we went live I was like, "Yo, can you freestyle?" <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "Yo, can you actually Yo. freestyle?" And I told Jack that uh, after the interview is said and done, that I'll pull up a beat and then put him on the spot. Shit, you never know. This could be like the video that gets you out there you know j cole could see this who knows <laughs> all right so um i got like a random beat okay let me let me let me let me play it right now do i need headphones or it's cool i'm going to play it. Tell them I'm a body, them on day song I'm barred up, I just need the bass on I 
just need time Sometimes maybe feeling like I'm swimming up the river Or sometimes maybe feeling like my prayers can be different Sometimes maybe feeling like Yeah, that's too fast to get it, get it. Yeah, that's a bit too fast, let's get another one Let me get another one, let me get another one Let's, let's, let's go with like some nice uh, Like a nice lo-fi um, Okay, so this is going to be at random Sorry. They're not paying us as an ad <laughs> <laughs> Hola, hola, hola Hey. Yeah. Hey yo. Uh, she asked me why I never make some time. I'm always working, trying to lay a rhyme, seduce a naked mind. Into the naked eye, I'm doing nothing more than bending time and blurring spatial lines. I'm trying to stay aligned, cause rhythm and every vibration is my favorite kind. For most I lack patience, it's a basic vibe. That's spacious. I need some space just to reflect and talk to Don Maker and find acres on the other side. Something like chili peppers. The intentions in my arteries they keep me tender. For my recent efforts, everybody giving me applause. I've been building up my networks, pulling strings like old guitars. My twenties wasn't meant to be this heavy. The people were supposed to be more friendly, but the ego was oversized and the ethos on the side. But they say life is a song. Outside, I got a mask on, Tony Stark Just a young legend trying to live a dream Before he parts, I wanna be I break a leg, I get the point I'm throwing darts, I hold my chops Home alone, feeling like a Novocaine Or honeycombs, too many flows I pick him out like Mighty Mo Any meaty taste of what I got in store He really created me a connoisseur And that's the news, I'm on poor In my bag like transport, I could transport you Got a mask for encore Not a second, I was unsure Should I do me, should I conform Did the form in top form Got a verse form in the mock form on platforms and a short shot, leave next booze and whatnot. Black views and four stars, close doors and call drops. I'm past that, where the pork chops got cash there, where the talk shop. I ain't got the time, you ain't got the heart, no autumn. Like, not a they got questions. How a nigga like you start rapping? What motivation to keep going? Why you sounding like you're in the chat? You should go some more pages, man. Why you cutting the room? Yo, 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 yo. So I just first wanna know how 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 does one get to like freestyle? Like how how do you get to freestyle? Um, that that to be honest is not like a freestyle freestyle. I feel like freestyle okay. implies I'm making up. On yeah, the spot. on the spot. Yeah. No, no, no. That's that's just like one of many verses. One of many verses. Okay, no, that's that's still incredible yeah, that you can be able to do yeah, that. Yeah. Yo, that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, so one more thing I want to be able to talk about before you leave. Um, you're trying to get to Berkeley, NYC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why Berkeley? Tell us about your vision. Tell us how we can be able to make your dream come true. Um, Berkeley. Why Berkeley? Berkeley is like one of the best one of the top music schools in the world mm -hmm. um not only for the level the quality in their in their teaching mm -hmm. but also the networks you can build while there okay so i mean of course i'm looking forward to learning new things mm -hmm. like i said i'm really passionate about um the course that i've, I've applied and been accepted into mm -hmm. is uh, a master's in creative media, songwriting, and production option. Okay. So I'm really keen on bettering my skills as a producer because it can go it can go much further. It's not just about music. I also hope, like, even when I'm watching, like I I told you, I'm into films and all that. Mm -hmm. Like I'm usually analyzing things like the score of these films and mm. just trying to figure out where was where was the audio audio engineer's guy. Or the where was the engineer's mind at mm -hmm. when he was composing this score or and it's the most interesting thing like you can hear like a sound in a movie and it's like maybe maybe it's say it's space and it's like this monster trying to crush a planet mm. and in your when you're watching the movie it takes you 
it really puts you in that world but then you go and watch behind the scenes it can spoil it for you because you can find like it's a guy mashing wet oranges yeah. with foil around them mm. like they they make these sounds in the most crazy ways, ways yeah. that to me i find that interesting so mm-hmm. um i'm really hoping i can get to learn more about production and become better at it mm-hmm. and more than that even just network because like i said i i I envision myself being at a level where I have global networks mm. of musicians and music industry professionals. Yeah. So also the networking part for it for me is very key. So yeah, that's why I want to go there and how you can help me get there is contribute to my I have an ongoing fundraiser. Mhm. It's the pinned tweet on my Twitter, it's a pinned post on my Instagram. Yeah. So whatever you can assist me with, you know. Mhm. Nice, yeah. nice. Um when would you be looking to go? I was actually supposed to go this September. Okay. This nigga is broke. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was I was accepted into this September's course, mm-hmm. but that that timeline to raise that money, mm-hmm. I couldn't do it. So Okay. Berkeley were they were kind mm-hmm. enough to allow me to what's it called? To reschedule to ex- like okay. my entry to next year September. Okay. They also allowed me to keep my scholarship, so Nice. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to achieve right now. I'm trying to gather that okay. those funds here. Yes, yeah, so please make sure that you go contribute, just help him so Absolutely. that we can get him to Berkeley NYC, man. Absolutely. That's going to be incredible. I hope that you get to go. Thank you. Yo, that thank would be you, incredible. You. Just yeah. save everything. You can even sell everything so <laughs> by next no, year no, September. No, like of like, course I will. Yeah. If, if I get to a point where I'm, I'm sure You're that sure, okay, yeah. I'm going. I'm probably selling everything. All right. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I want to thank you for sharing your story. Yeah. I want to thank you for the music that you just keep gifting us as you keep going. <laughs> please don't stop. Yeah. We're going to be cheering you on. Thank you. And yeah, please make sure that you go and check him out, guys. This is Jack Quill. Please. It's Jack Quill everywhere, right? Instagram, yeah, Twitter. Every Instagram, Twitter, Tidal, even some some Indian streaming sites. Like I just put my my stuff Your everywhere. stuff. Yeah. TikTok, I hope. Man, I'll Nah, be. you <laughs> nah, you need to get on TikTok. Let me tell you, I, I tried TikTok twice. It, twice <laughs> I, I don't know i don't know, I don't know. Um, i'll try it at that time please that try time i feel like for artists now i don't it's know almost this. essential yeah I, i'm aware I'm yeah aware. it I'll is try it, yeah. all right please make sure that you go follow him as jack will everywhere make sure you go stream his music make sure you also if you can please make sure that you go contribute a little something something to get him to go to Berkeley NYC he got a scholarship and we're trying to get him to go so that you know he can put us out there yep yeah <laughs> is there anything you you want to tell your fans or people who've been listening man thank you thank you for being tuned in It's cool to the motherfucking world as always. And, hey. Uh, yeah man, just take care of yourselves man. Don't 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 forget to take care of yourself. The mm-hmm. world needs you. True. Be at your best. Do everything to ensure you're at your best and positive vibes always man. Peace. Yeah yeah yeah. You already heard. All right guys. So I'm going to be here till 7 p.m. so make sure you do not go anywhere. This is the Two Chapiana show. This is Radio 254, nice the home of Kenyan music and content. It's on like chills. I know come out in fact. They should call me Night Quill. Y'all can comprehend the shit that I feel. I feel tapping into the moment. It's a life skill. When I'm in my zone, I get some like chills. I know come out in